Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Denver Gamer and today I'm going to show you how to get PlayStation 2 games working on your PC with PCSX2. The name PCSX2 comes from combining three acronyms, that's PC for personal computer, PS2 for obviously the PlayStation 2, and PSX, which stands for PlayStation Experimental. If you want to know a little bit more about where that name came from and you're curious about it, I will leave a link to a thread in the video description where that comes from. Anyway, guys, let's get to the point of this video and get started. Go to the link in the description and that will take you to PCSX2.net, as you can see here, and we're on the home page. Go ahead and click download, and this is gonna take you to all the downloads of the emulator. Here is the table of contents. And if you scroll down, you can see the stable release lists. That is what we're gonna use. And if you scroll down further down the page, there are nightly builds done by the developers to add new features and pull requests. Those are really for developers. We can get into those for another video. We're gonna use 1.6.0 and I'm gonna click on the window icon here. Now, what you're gonna see is two choices pop up. And here's the differences. One is the installer and one is the portable version. I want to use the portable version so I can put it on an external hard drive, for instance, and put my PS2 games on the external hard drive and take everything with me. The disadvantage to that is that the installer puts everything on your computer and then you have shortcuts and you can access it from the start menu and it's a little more convenient. But like I said, I'm gonna use the portable version. Go ahead and download it. Now that you have that downloaded, you can go ahead and minimize out of your internet window and you have a 7-zip file. Go ahead and right click on that. You can use 7-zip or WinRAR or any unzipping program and extract the file here. I'm using it on my desktop. You can go ahead and delete the 7-zip file because now we have the file folder that we'll be working with, PC SX2 1.60. There are some other files that you will need. You will need BIOS files. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. In layman's terms, an emulator needs to act like a machine to play these ROMs or disk image files. In this case, the emulator is pretending to be a PlayStation 2. So you need to dump the BIOS files off of your PlayStation 2. Now, I can't tell you where to go get them on the internet, but I will tell you that Google is your friend. And I personally did not go to archive.org and download them myself. I created them off of my physical PlayStation 2, and you should not go to archive.org where they may be. Also, you need a backup copy of your physical game. Today, I'm going to play Haunting Ground. I took my physical game and ripped it into an ISO file. I have my BIOS files in a folder named BIOS, and I have my game in a folder named Games. The BIOS folder is very important. The Games folder, not so much, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the same place. Go ahead and drag your BIOS and Games folders into the PCSX folder, and let's play a game. Let me sort that real quick. Okay, go ahead and run the application. And here you will see the startup wizard. You can go ahead and click next through this and there will be some other choices here. These are all kind of default. Go ahead and hit next again. We're just trying to get a game running in this video. And here where we put those BIOS files in, we will be able to actually select it. So go ahead and select that. If you have a Japanese BIOS, a European BIOS, and a North American BIOS, that would be ideal to play the different regions of games. But for this video, I just had the North American BIOS. It is going to run the program the first time and create some additional folders. But now we are up and running. So go ahead and close that window and let's start messing around with the emulator itself. So the first thing to do here is to configure our controller. Go down to controllers and then select plugin settings. Select pad one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of this out of here, just so we have a blank slate to show you how to do this with any controller. You'll see all the different buttons for the PlayStation 2 DualShock. 
So if I click on L1 here and I hit the left shoulder on my Xbox 360 wired controller, which I like to use, you will see that it shows the left shoulder button is mapped as L1 on a PS2 controller. There is a quicker way to do this though. We are going to select quick setup. This will prompt you to cycle through all the different buttons on the controller. For select, I will use the back button on the Xbox 360 controller. For the left thumb, uh, L3, I will click the left thumbstick. Uh, the D-pad, up, down, left, right, all that stuff, and just map them out. Now you're gonna see here the DX controller one. We're gonna come back and fix this here in a second. What happened was I held down the right trigger too long. And so it wound up mapping it twice or, or something. So we will go back and delete that and then click on the button individually as I showed you before to remap it. Also, my 360 controller did not have a button for that analog button that was on the DualShock. So I wound up mapping that later on to a key on my keyboard. So right here, I'm gonna click stop and I'm gonna go back to that little DX controller R2 thing that I did. I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. And I'm gonna delete it and I'll go select the R2 button there and map it to my controller correctly. So now we have the entire controller mapped out. Let's go load up a game. Select apply or simply select okay. And that will take you back out. Select CDVD, ISO selector, browse. Find your ISO image on your computer. I left mine inside of the emulator folder under games. Highlight it, select open. If you go back under ISO selector, you can see it there, haunting ground. Now we're ready to play. Go to system and you'll have two options, boot full or boot fast. Boot full takes you through the original PlayStation menu and it actually has this PlayStation 2 logo pop up. It's very nostalgic for me, I like that. Or boot fast will take you directly into the game. And now we're gonna take a look at Haunting Ground running on the PC. You can drag your window and expand it however big you want. And let's uh, let's check this out. Looks like we're missing a sound effect there for the Capcom, um, what do you call it, logo? But we do have this beautiful sound coming through. And look at those graphics. Now this is the native PS2 resolution. In a few minutes, I'll show you how to play this in HD. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit start there. Look at that logo, nice and crisp. Start a new game. And yeah, we'll, we'll skip through this. We don't need to see a bunch of uh, video scenes. Now, wait till you see when we get this in the HD here in a second. You can tell in this native PS2 resolution that it's kind of grainy and it's got kind of uh, hard edges and pixelated edges and stuff like that. I will show you real quick. Let me move this window over and pop out my emulator there. You can go under config and video and go to plugin settings. Right here in the under where it says native PS2, switch that to 1080p. Now look at that. That is so much crisper. Now I'm gonna zoom in real quick and I'll show you. There, there is a problem here though. She has kind of a slight halo effect. And this is the part of the video where I'm gonna get a little bit advanced, you know. If you guys have gotten everything running, that's kind of what you came here to do. But if you wanna stick around and, and learn a little bit more advanced stuff, I will show you to where you can go to tweak your games, and that is this PCSX2 wiki. And you can see over here, I was looking at uh, some games earlier. Arcana Heart was one that ran perfectly. And 
you can see there's people that actually tested this, left notes, and if there are any problems with the emulator, any bugs, they will document it. Now, let's go over to Haunting Ground. Here's the Haunting Ground page. And you can see there's all of these little glitches and stuff that they're still trying to work out in this emulator. And right here, Halo Effect surround the characters. That's what we're gonna try to fix. And it's telling me to, in video plugin settings, click enable hardware hacks, click advanced settings and hacks and set half pixel offset to normal vortex. I'm just gonna show you how to do this for this game. Go back to your emulator, select config, video, plugin settings. There is a checkbox to enable the hardware hacks. Click advanced settings. Let's see, is it this one here? No, here it is. Half pixel offset. Select the drop down. Select normal with vortex in parentheses. Now look at it. Looking a lot better. Even more crystal clear. Now I'm going to skip forward to a cutscene to really show you that this is gonna look like a PS4 game. It is beautiful. This is the first cutscene where you meet the other hot chick. And uh, just just look at the character models. And this is a PS2 game. This is this is gonna be insane. A little tip for you if you want to switch in between full screen and window, just press Alt Enter. And you know what? I will also zoom in here for you as well so you can kind of see the full, you know, detail with this HD resolution. You can see the emotions on her face. I mean, I don't remember PS2 games looking like this. Just wow. And she is not creepy. So anyway, we could stop it right there, but that gives you an idea of what you can do with the PC SX2 emulator. And in the next video, I'll be showing you guys how to really optimize your settings for most PCs. I know some of you guys have desktops, some of you guys have laptops and even Steam decks. And that is going to be amazing when I get one of those. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you next video.